What's going on everyone? Welcome back to EWC. We are in Hong Kong. Wow. After we check out Kinsman, we will have part two of EWC in Hong Kong. So the next stop we're gonna go check out is Wrist Check. Today we're here with my good friend Sean. And unfortunately, Austin is not here, but Sean is good enough. We don't need Austin. Austin, if you're watching this, I'll just see you next time. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Wrist Check. Uh, this is this is actually my first time in Wrist Check. So let's just kind of walk around and take a look. And then we can uh, kind of look into some special watches and uh, see what's up. Hello, what's up, man? How are you? Uh, very good, very good. The thing that we wanted to do uh, at the entrance is sort of have a display wall that's a little bit interactive. Yeah. So you look at all the watches that we highlight, you're able to interact with them by uh, swiping, uh, just like you would do so like an Iron Man stuff. So swipe into watches oh, to look at them at different angles. So there's, so just, uh, that is really cool. Yeah, it's magic. And then uh, what's going on with this? I remember Austin and uh, Sean telling me about this. Yeah. Like, you guys are starting to kind of like have all this data, all the prices of uh, the transactions. This is really where we're trying to change the industry is we have the most accurate data points in terms of how much pieces sell on the website and then yeah. we feed everything into our own wrist check index. Okay. And, and, and are these transaction prices only based off of the transactions from wrist check or also from other dealers as well? Wrist check and all, most of the popular platforms you can find on the market. Yeah, okay. Wow, this is a very, very paddock complication. 5170 Chrono, uh, it's got baguette barkers inside and Tiffany stamp, platinum. You know it's platinum when it has a little diamond right in here. So sexy, but it's expensive. And then this is the Singapore edition. That's a Singapore edition. Yeah, Singapore editions always use more red, huh? Oh, wow, but I mean, like, look at that. Look at the dial. World time chrono. I mean, it's wrapped up, but it says Patek Philippe, Singapore 2019. 5930G. 5930G, the white gold. Yeah. Very special. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, man. Kevin, thank you so much. Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah, just stopping by Wrist Check. If you guys are in Hong Kong, please, please, please do check out Wrist Check. All right, now we're going to go check out another watch shop. It's run by this guy named Ivan. Uh, he's not here today, he's not in Hong Kong, but we're gonna go check some stuff out. Great vintage people. Yeah, I am looking for a yellow gold four digit Daytona. Today we're gonna look at the 6265 black dial. So, I'm using the loop right now, um, just looking at the dial, seeing if there's any marks or anything evident, but also the sub-dials, seeing if it's clean or if there's any small marks on it. Uh, I think with vintage Rolex, you're, you're very rarely going to find something that's 100% mint. As long as everything is period correct, and as long as you can accept these minor little, little defects or whatever, um, if you can accept it, uh, I think it's very subjective. Everything is your own POV. At the end of the day, you're, you're buying the dealer, right? You're buying the person that's selling this watch. That his loom plot is Rolex reference numbers. Now it's, you know, like random numbers, right? So with uh, Rolex numbers, uh, all the serial numbers are actually starting from, let's say, the first ever produced. Let's say this watch is in the six, which was, uh, I'm not gonna tell you the full number, but 6.25, okay? So we'll just say that the 6.25 million reference, which is the serial number, therefore you can actually go back and date check when it was produced from Rolex. And uh, they have a very handy card right here. So if it's around 6.2, it should be in the 1979 to 1980, somewhere around there. Uh, is the bracelet same, period correct? It means that it's period correct uh, with the case. Um, 71 and links. So he's winding it up and uh, we're gonna test out the chrono, see if it works. Moment of truth, stopwatch time. Is it moving? Is it moving? Yeah, it's moving. And then look, the, the second's hands. Swooping through, let's stop it. It's working. 
Sub dolls working, second hands working, the stopwatch is working. Now we go dive with it. No, we don't we don't scuba dive with these watches. We don't do that. This is your EMC shameless plug in. We have the new EMC t-shirts and the new EMC pumper hat coming out very soon. Pre-order starts June 5th. Mark that down in your calendars. We have Taipei edition, Haizong edition. We we'll also have other destinations, Hong Kong, Singapore, Malaysia, but that will depend on the quantity from the pre-order. So go let us know where you're from. And don't forget, June 22nd, Taiwan Empire Aqua Beach Cleanup is at Zhongjiao Wan. All the information will be below. If you want more information, you can go on Empire Aqua FB or IG. Summer's coming around the corner, and we have the EMC Summer Meetup. It's gonna be cars, surfing, and barbecue. July 5th, see you guys soon. Peace, back to your regular schedule programming. All right, next stop. We are going to see Johnson. What's up, bro? So Johnson has taken us to meet his partners, Anthony and Alfred Poon. Uh, we are at their office. Uh, they've taken the time to show us some really, really cool watches that I've never seen. Uh, but yeah, their information is down below. And let's get going. Yeah, well, this one is, uh, this is crazy. This is an octopus bracelet. Yeah. They were very rarely made in the 1980s. This is my first time seeing a uh, octopus bracelet. Wow. They made the bezel in a different uh, material or it was like a Yeah, white, in white gold. In white gold? Yep. For the for the octopus. That's interesting. Jeez. So are these you part of your collections or like you're yes. selling some too? Um, part of them we, we sell them, but um, the one that you're holding right now with the white gold is the one that we, we kept for like probably the last eight years. Yeah. yeah. The rarest one is actually the white gold one. Probably yeah. never been seen in the, in the market. Yeah. Uh, people are into them. You know, you know that the white golds and the platinums are, are way more rare, which is really, really sexy. But I, I, I myself am into a little more yellow and, and rose. But yeah, this is still uh, fucking grails. Like holy grails, ultimate holy grail shit. How did you really like get into specifically day dates? Because that's what everyone knows you for, right? Yeah,但是我本来已经认识他 古董劳力士跟古董相机的一个展览 crossover Rolex的一个展览 That's how we met at the first in like 2017 actually Yeah And then and then we realized oh, we were both at the same age and that we, we have the same passion He has the great passion with cameras I have the great passion with watches because yeah. of the family So then we um, decided to start something together and then that's how we ended up here now Yeah, yeah. okay Yeah, yeah we, we would be quite surprised when you look into day days like, People who doesn't understand the market for day days will, will thought that these watches are like what 50,000, 100,000 US. Yeah. But in day dates, there are a lot of watches that uh, has like crazy price. Like for example, there's this white gold Bloodstone. Initially, this watch is actually made for the Taiwan market only, exclusively for Taiwan. So all white gold Bloodstone oh. are from Taiwan. Yeah, I, I realized that. Yes, yeah. because they made five pieces for the Taiwan market in the 1992 Two. yeah for the shop opening I think and then and then one of these very important Taiwan clients couldn't get one when they were launched in Taiwan so special the Rolex special order one for him so the one that he has is the one with the Swiss style yeah. so normally you see all the T-Swiss T-Dial right. so in total there's six of them yeah. 
Is this a platinum? Or yes, this is, is a, a platinum, platinum, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, the color is a little different. And also with these style baguettes. This Actually, right the here. white gold version of this is much more rare than the platinum version yeah. of this. But the dial, because it's a half paint sapphire dial, yeah. um, is quite rare but because they never really launched it out uh, uh, to the market. Uh, they kept it in the surface center yeah. for years and then the people dial, find yeah. them out for some reason. Yeah. And they realized, oh, this is, they made this dial, but they never really sold it out in public. Yeah, yeah. I actually bought one. Uh, I bought it, there's a few marks on it. The black is very difficult to find perfect. No, there's no way to find it. There is no, perfect there is no perfect for the black, right? Because they will oxidize. Yeah. And the black will go go away, become gold color. Yeah. Well, I guess that's what's charming about vintage Rolex. Through time, you see the little defects start to happen, and some people appreciate it, some people don't. So it's very subjective. It's it's all your own personal. Views, I guess. These sure. are the rarest conjure that Wow. Okay, so this is an obsidian conjure style. One of two in the world. One of two in the world. Wow. That is five digits. Only one in the world. This one. And look at the bracelet. It's a mesh bracelet. Ooh. Wow. Or oh, this, this is, is a four, four digit, four this digit. is a five digit. The, the print, the font style is different. Yeah. The easier to recognize is sapphire and plastic. Yeah. And I remember, if I remember correctly, the, the older dials, the oyster, the O is more round. And then the O for this is more oval. It's more like a thin, yeah. Yeah. But, holy shit. Yeah, I've seen so many grills right now. I'm a, I'm a little, uh, well, wow. <laughs> it's like, oh shit, man. Like, it's a tight goal as well. Yeah, <laughs> it's like I don't know what to, I don't know what to look at. <laughs> and then this is, uh, this is very rare too. This is a six digit, right? Okay, but it's got the emerald markers. Oh, this is a, uh, yeah, this is the salmon dial. This is very nice. Besides their vintage Rolex collection. They do have a huge selection of other crazy, crazy rare watches um, from PPs. Uh, and wow, this one, what, what is this? This is like a- 5110 is a turbulent um, 10 days uh, power reserve uh, protect. But the rarity of this watch is because it's with this engraved case. Yeah. They only made 10 pieces. Oh, when, uh, this is gorgeous. The last auction record is like 3.5 million Hong Kong, I think. Oh, this is all hand engraved. Yes. This is absolutely gorgeous. And then uh, I think this is the one of one, the only one in the yes. world, right? One of one uh, with the red hand, oh, red hand. 1580, 1400. Oh. oh man, so I thought. My 5980 Tiffany was like a super grail, but this is a one of one. Should I? Should I? It's, it's talking to me, you know? This is talking to me. Right? I mean, this is a one of one with the red hand. And I do like my bling, motherfuckers. I do like my bling. We'll, we'll talk. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk. talk, we'll, talk. We'll, talk. <laughs> we'll talk. We'll talk. We'll talk. We'll get the price down. All right, we'll start a GoFundMe. Everyone, please. Jen Chen. Jen Chen. Jen Chen, go like. We'll down my this. Guys, if you're ever in Hong Kong, or if you're not in Hong Kong, and if you guys want to see some ultra really, really sick watches, if you're interested, Please go find these two gentlemen. Their IGs are below, their website is below. Yeah, I just wanted to say thank you again. The pleasure and is ours. I hope everyone that's watching, you know, continue watching. I mean, yeah, please let us know which one of these watches that you guys saw is and we can crown as the grail of the grails. Okay? Now we'll see you guys next time. So thank you boys. Thank you. Very much. Much.